What is going on everybody? Jumbo Thick here, back with more Warhammer Fantasy Roleplay. This is our Rise of the Forsaken campaign. This is, of course, Warhammer Fantasy 4th Edition. And I will be your GM, your DM for the night, Mr. Jumbo Thick. And I am joined by the full cast and crew, the Unfortunate Fellowship, and all their glory. We have Doobie 209, Jumbo Smooth, and Pierce Galactic. You would care to briefly introduce yourselves um, because we are about to get into the thick of it. No pun intended. <laughs> Hello, everyone. This is uh, <laughs> this is Jumbo Smooth. I'll be playing the role of Marius Wolf this evening. Um, I am a human pit fighter, uh, pit fighter champion to be exact. Five eight, gray hair, blue eyes, stocky, strong lad. Um, has a has a pair of knuckle dusters he likes to use, you know. Pulls out his mm. pants, Rick's flare style, you know. Mm. And then, uh, you know, he, he's got a, a pick named Jingi Zan, which apparently lets him do really cool things. If you listen to our last episode, so that is Marius Wolf. Yes. Yeah. Speaking of doing cool things, do we two hundred nine? I hope people know who Rick Flair is that listen to this. <laughs> they might not. Uh, <laughs> it's a good uh, chance they don't, on, actually. What's everybody? <laughs> I know they're uh, so old. <laughs> what's going on, everybody? Do be two men here, and I play Seamus McGreedy. And you know, if you don't know what Seamus does by now, you know, go back and listen to some early episodes. I assume everybody knows by now. so They should. You know, I'm, just, I'm just ready to uh, go to Carrick Norn. Oh, going to Carrick Norn, apparently. Uh, speaking of going to Carrick Norn, Mr. Galactic. That's right. Uh, Pierce Galactic is here, and I'm going to be playing, as usual, if you've been listening to any of our our sessions, Braganine Bono, a former, former Milf Bretonian noble, a independent lord, a writer, an artist, a leader of men, uh, a friend of the dwarves, mm. uh, and, and someone who's quite excited and more than a little beat the heck up right now. Awesome. Yes. And um speaking of dwarves, we did get to we finally got some dwarves back into the uh into the campaign. Um uh, it took a long time, but we are um in an interesting spot because last we left off, the fellowship had found themselves deep below Sealberg in a hidden Skaven warden of Clan Fleabiter. Where you pursued the abducted three fingers um, down into the depths. You, along the way, managed to free several missing miners and many other humans that had been taken captive by the Skaven down here, who were apparently performing some foul ritual that may or may not have had dire consequences, was it not thwarted, as between the three of you, you managed to slay the leadership of Clan Fleabiter. Um, this was, of course, no easy task, as both Seamus and Bragadine almost fell permanently um, at the hand of Crete, the Skaven assassin. However, they were aided by Lady Montague um, due to a summons or a... Um, what would you call this? A call for aid by Bragadine that he set out before you set down into the tunnels proper. A most, I will say, a very good thing that uh, you did so. As not only was Lady Montague summoned, but also the dwarves were summoned to war. Um, you don't exactly know who got them to come. But let's just say that word got out due to uh, Mr. Bonneau sending out his men to rally some allies in your fight against the Skaven. You killed the Gracier, Taxtrich, Taxtrich, and the um, warlord of Clan Fleabiter, whom, whose name is unimportant because he died so ashamedly. Um, you also fell to help at Abomination amongst many other rat men. Um, between guns and explosions and death and murder. At the very end of it, the three of you had managed to finally meet up down at a massive battle that took place between your aiding dwarves, 
the men that um, Seamus recognized as many of the bandits that were under Three Fingers is Sway. And, of course, yourselves and the ever mysterious and uh, ever present witch hunter that you managed to free as well, Mr. Krieger, whom may or may not have a long lost relation to someone that met a grisly demise early on in the campaign. You were fleeing because the ritual that was taking place involved a rather massive chunk of warp stone that very similarly to what happened in your very, very first adventure was beginning to pulse and charge and ultimately detonate behind you. And we're picking up right there at the uh, detonation of the Warpstone Pillar in the depths of Clan Fleabiter as the three of you are fleeing down the main tunnel, that the, the largest tunnel. Um, you did not come in through this one. You came through the one further up where you had sent the miners and the surviving um, people that you had managed to gather. They were escaping through that tunnel. Um, hopefully, they all got out. You are currently moving down this tunnel. I will say probably in the thick of... All of those people I described previously, all of you are running in this one direction. The dwarves are slowly falling behind, not as quick as the rest of you. But we are going to initiate a skill challenge right off the bat, boys. So, um, let's go ahead and roll initiative, just so that we have a pecking order. Uh, five. No, eight. Oh. All right. And... Eight. Uh, Eight for Seamus. What do we got for Marius? Uh, that's 13. Okay, so Marius, Seamus. What about uh, Mr. Beno? He's spawned right behind Marius with uh, 13. Okay, yeah. So we'll just do we'll just do Marius, Bragadine, and then Seamus. That's what we'll do. Make a note. All right. Um, currently, you, Marius, you are, you'll be first up as the ground is quaking. The dwarves are cussing and screaming in their guttural language. Um, the men are fleeing ahead of you. You don't see, um, many offshoot tunnels, but this does go somewhere, obviously, um, you can tell that this is well crafted. Um, it is, doesn't look like a Skaven tunnel. It looks like it may or may not have been part of the um, part of the underway uh, that the dwarves had built long, long ago. But um, you are free to initiate this skill challenge as you see fit. I'm going to need twelve success levels cumulative between the three of you to escape the onslaught of what is going to happen behind you as um, it appears that uh, the very ground itself is upheaving. Um, if you get six degrees of failure, something bad will happen. And we will leave it as that. So, Marius, you're first up. What would you like to do? Right. Um, this is kind of a question uh, okay. beforehand. So we're, we're kind of in the sea of people... The bandits and yes, um, you're you. There are there are men fleeing. There are dwarves. Um, you would have your crew with you, so you do have um, Bragadine and Seamus. Um, you you the three of you are together, as well as Jaeger. Uh, as well as uh, Jaeger. Yes. Okay. Um, three fingers is is somewhere. Do we see you, you don't you don't see her immediately, but you are you could probably make the assumption because you saw her earlier. That hopefully she is somewhere in the crowd. Okay. Um, well, I think I will try to do um, maybe either trade, <laughs> maybe engineering or uh, secret science minor, perhaps, to try to see if. Okay. 
uh, there's a, a way, or if I see something that's unique about the structure, you know, maybe even throw in low geology. You know? mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I don't know. You you yeah. pick one, and you you can roll uh, that one. I will try secret sides minor. Secret sides minor. Okay, go ahead and roll it. Yeah. Okay. Uh, that is going to be a 26 out of 37. So only one success. One success. 11 to go. <laughs> so let me mark that <laughs> <Yeah>. down. <laughs> 11 to go. All right. Um, you do see as you are moving through this very large tunnel that the tunnel, it looks like it's beginning to... Um, it looks like you're you're approaching the end of most of the dwarven craftsmanship looks like this was just a, a preserved piece as it was. And then it branches out into what looks like a collapsed section. Similar to what happened um, when you were venturing to Bretonia. And you had to find a way around that collapsed section. Something similar has happened here. Um, though not as bad. And as you're looking around, you can see that there are um, more like quickly excavated but well done tunnels that have been excavated through the rubble and with your um, secret signs you can see that there are markings next to these tunnels up ahead that mark them as the dwarven um, tunnels that more than likely these these dawi carved their way through to get here to begin with um, so they are probably safe to venture through I'll probably impart that knowledge to my, my crew running around me. Yes. Uh, and and just, it appears that the, yeah, the, uh, the dwarves yeah, are making their way. The, mm -hmm. they, yeah. the dwarves themselves are making their way to there. Most of the, the people are just kind of following their lead at this point. Um, the dwarves are moving slower. They're a lot, they're wearing heavy armor and they're just not as quick as the rest of you. So are you going, or I do need to ask this. Are you, three going to try to push ahead past them or are you just running with them uh well spoiler i was going to try to use my skill to like push them onward so i guess i'm running with them okay all right um well then that will bring us to uh Bragadine. you're next up so we do how many humans do we have with us oh uh there's quite a few it would be Perfect. to to get a head count. It would take too long. So just no, know that you are in a crowd of people and dwarves. Okay. All right. I'm gonna try and set myself up for my next uh, skill challenge. Mm -hmm. So so I'm gonna fall back. Actually, kind of fall back near the near the back of the crowd a little bit. Okay. Or where the biggest. Actually, I'm gonna fall back to where it appears to me that the largest group of uh, humans are. Okay. Well, um, as I go through them, I fear not, fellow Reichlanders. We we have already crushed this foe. We just we are almost almost safe and home. Stand stand tall. Stand with our dwarven allies, and we will make it through this. And uh, kind of, it sounds kind of like you're terrible you're, speech. You're, you're, trying to do leadership. But that was a terrible speech. Fi so. Fishing for a leadership test. Go ahead and make one. Trying, <laughs> we'll see trying. how it goes. All right. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, oh, it went really great. It's a four. Oh my Ooh. gosh! So four out of uh, let's look at that penalty. Four out of seventy. So Dear that's... Lord, six levels of success. Yeah. Yep. All right, so only five to go, boys. Only five to go. Jeez, man, you guys might do this in one round. Terrible speech, though, man. I'm so it's uh, so it's it's okay. Apparently, it it doesn't need to be as great as it's it's fumbling out of your mouth as you're you're moving quickly. You're beginning to pant even, um, but you do notice Bragadine as you as you begin to fall back that you look behind you and you you feel waves of heat, and as you look back, you also hear chittering and screeching and screaming as. The remnants of Clan Fleabiter, the Skaven Horde, is also fleeing the collapse of their warren and are desperately running behind the rest of you. Um, you also see remnants of not just Ratmen, but of the foul creatures that they had kept um, 
tucked away that are also have been unleashed into the world. So there are things behind you moving quickly. Um, perhaps that was uh, more than enough little pep to get to the rest of the uh, crowd moving quicker. And that will bring us to Seamus McCready. It is now your turn. So I, being a uh, dwarf friend, Ooh, thanks, yeah. to, uh, thanks to Brother Thor Doom, mm -hmm. uh, I'm going to try and spur these dwarves on to, uh, to get moving their stunted legs. Okay. Um, Seamus style, you know, probably uh, a little more aggressive, a little more intimidating on them. Mm. This isn't much of a leader. Okay. Um, yeah. How are you going to do this? Um, since they're flying behind, I'll probably I can imagine I'm running with them. And just probably shout out something like, uh, let's see. Yeah. I'm not going to die in this fucking tunnel with these rats. You die, you better get your stunted legs moving. Okay. Are you doing? Are you trying? Are you trying to do persuasion? Are you trying? Or I mean, um, charm? Or are you trying to do intimidation? No, intimidation. Intimidation. Okay. Go ahead and give me an intimidation roll. <laughs> we'll Shame see how this goes. Anybody? Uh, ooh, question: Do I, since I used up my fate point, do I have my one fortune left? You do. You have you because okay. you had an extra fortune point, so you will always have Good. that one point. Mm -hmm. Because I rolled a 99, so... Yes, please give that. me that crit fail. You guys need some failures here. <laughs> uh, ooh, that one is a 13. Oh, nice, nice. 58. 13. That's a good skill to do, too, bro. 13, 23, 33, 43. You guys are one short. One short, boys. You're almost Take out of here. Take it home, Marius. But here's, home, what, here's how this goes, though. Um, you begin shouting out towards them, and the nearest dwarf to you, you see his face redden. And he starts screaming out, Come on, you Ozix! And you can see that this dwarf in particular has a, a helmet on that has, it looks like winged kind of tips along the, along the side of it that almost puts him um, nearly as tall as you if you were to look at the top of the helmet. It's, it's just massive. Um, and he has very elaborate armor on. And he begins screaming at the, uh, the rest of the dwarves to not be shown up by a bunch of foul manlings. And you have successfully got them moving quicker. At this point, all of you make it to the smaller tunnels. Um, the groups begin to split up because you can't all fit in the same tunnels at once. Do you guys stay together or do you guys split between the multiple tunnels here? I'm assuming we stay together. I gotta um, ask, just in case. If, <laughs> if well, we can fit. Actually, <laughs> yeah, you can, I mean, you can fit. Uh, each, okay. each tunnel, uh, you could probably fit about eight or ten people abreast. They're, they're not by any means small. Um, okay. yeah, yeah. How tall are they? They are slightly taller than you, Seamus, so you won't have to okay. slouch. But if these were carved by people, they would be much taller. <laughs> Unfortunately, they weren't. They're all heading in the same direction, or we're not. We're not. I, maybe I misunderstood. They're not. It's not a branch off, is it? No, these are all going. You're all exactly. going in the same direction. It just looks like multiple okay. tunnels were were carved. Okay. Um. Yeah, I'll I'll stay with the boys. Okay. All right. Then that brings us to Marius Wolf. As you guys are moving into the uh, into the smaller tunnels, um, what would you like to do, Marius? I think. Uh... It's just like this final push. I'm just gonna just, you know, run in as hard as I can. So, I'm just gonna try to do like an athletics check. Just run, run this last little bit. Okay, go ahead and give me athletics then. Trips and falls. Uh, that's gonna be a twelve out of oh, fifty-six. Yeah. That's it. That's it. So with one last push. Marius kind of gets his feet underneath him and quickly climbs up to the uh, edge of this um, this tunnel. Your quick burst of speed, um, almost sparking a fire beneath the the dwarven asses, um, as well as some of the men that are funneling in the same tunnel as you. Um, do you keep pushing ahead, or do you wait at the mouth of the tunnel for everyone to pass, Marius? Uh... 
Vegas has probably been at least wait for his crew. So okay, and I will say they're probably, probably they're probably pretty close behind else. you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, Marius, since you, since you're you're going to be the the last one in this here, go ahead and give me a, a perception test real quick. Okay. Uh, that's it's gonna be close. Uh, fifty out of fifty-seven, so just a success. Okay, with just a success, mm-hmm. you you see that several of the rats, the uh, the foul skaven, have caught up with some of the men in the back, and are beginning to to. They're not exactly attacking them, but they're they're overtaking them because they're so quick, and they have <coughs> begun to kind of run over some of the uh, the other people trying to escape. The dwarves, it looks like most of them are coming into the tunnel that the three of you are entering. You do see that your witch hunter friend is closely behind the three of you. And you would also see, um, with just a success level, you do see a small pack of bandits um, that are pushing to the far right tunnel. So if you were in the center, this would be the one on the farthest right if there were um, several of these tunnels made. And they are moving into that one. Um, You can somewhat tell that Three Fingers may or may not be amongst their number. It's, it's, uh, she's smaller, and you do see a smaller form, but you can't necessarily identify who it is. Mm -hmm. I I would probably yell out to... As many people as I can, like this way, and mm-hmm. uh, you know, hopefully they would hear. But yeah, and that's probably all I do. As that happens, the blistering heat um, comes to a crescendo as the three of you um, enter into these these very hastily chiseled um, tunnels, and. As you push through, you hear a roaring, sucking noise of a, and then a detonation that rocks the very mountain itself. Who knows what is happening on the surface? But deep down here, the entire Skaven Warren has imploded, and rocks are falling from the ceiling, crushing everything around. The entrance to these tunnels that you're at are beginning to also loosen as stones are falling from the roof. And the three of you push inside just in time as the rocks begin to crumble behind and the entrance is blocked as the Skaven cannot overtake you and beat you to your exit. Damn it. Um, As you guys very easily just pushed on through the skill challenge. Guess I need to make them harder. Um, uh, it's yeah. the targeting starts the care, bro. We're getting cared about human. It's I'm true. I can give a little pep talk. So I mean, yeah, that's that's, that's a big part of it. It's a big part of it. They were so impressed that he would look to that. They were like, "Oh my gosh, we gotta, we gotta make it." <laughs> the three of you make it through this tunnel, and um, as soon as it collapses behind you, you are in complete darkness. As the only light that was illuminating the way was the fiery, well, not fire, necessarily fiery, the green ethereal glow of the detonating warp stone um, at the center of uh, Clan Flea Butter. But now that you're in complete darkness, what would you guys like to do? Uh, Marius is just trying to get his surroundings um, if he can. Um, and. You can see a little bit. You normally can see better in the dark, but this is complete darkness. Um, okay. However, quickly, there's a torch lit nearby, and it is one of the Dawi. And um, several other torches are lit by other members of this uh, of this proud race and passed along. You do see several bandits made it in with you, um, but mostly dwarves is what you have in this tunnel. And it looks like it's just a straight tunnel goes somewhere. Marius is gonna look just real quick. Um, he is as the torches start to light. Mm-hmm. Yeah, um, Marius's eyes are gonna kind of glance up towards the 
ceilings and mm-hmm. the corners, the dark corners of this of this tunnel. Mm-hmm. See if any sneaky scaven, perhaps. Oh, uh, oh, really? <laughs> why, why don't you go ahead and get, go and give me perception <laughs> test, and we'll see how this how this goes. <laughs> okay, <laughs> get, get that dagger in the foot again. <laughs> <laughs> no. Uh, not too bad. Uh, Twenty six out of fifty seven. So. Okay. As you're glancing about, uh, looking into the hidden corners, um, you don't see anything. You don't see anything moving outside of dirt, okay. beginning to kind of, and and small bits of rock that are falling from the ceiling. And the dwarves mm-hmm. are looking somewhat concerned, and you should as well, Marius, knowing um, your previous profession, as this tunnel is not going to last long. It wasn't meant mm-hmm. to last long yeah. to begin with, but. Due to the nature of what happened, um, you should probably move quickly. Okay. All right. Um, hurry, lads. We don't have much time. This tunnel won't hold. And you hear from from up ahead, there's a, uh, a deep, resounding boom of a voice. Come on, my lanes, keep up! And the dwarf with the elaborate kind of fluted winged headdress up ahead is um, calling out orders and moving um, quickly down the tunnel as quick as he can. His men are following. Yeah, probably good people to follow, so Marius is, is following. I'm assuming there's only one direction right now anyway. There's so. only, currently, there's only one direction. Um, yeah. After some time, the three of you enter into a a larger, somewhat, uh, the, the tunnel begins to kind of widen. And then as you reach the end of the tunnel, you see that you are on the other side. And this takes this probably takes about 15, 20 minutes. You're on the other side of the collapse. Um, and you notice that even over here, it looks like massive rocks have been dislodged that the the ceiling is cracked in several places of this uh, once proud underway. And you would notice that as you glance to the left and to the right, that the other tunnels um, were leading in the same direction, the smaller ones that you saw on the other side. But as you glance left and right, you don't see a lot of people coming out of the side tunnels. I'm assuming we're just kind of gathering everyone up on the other side. We're at the like other side. It's kind of big tunnel right now. Yeah, you're on. You're you're in a in one of the massive underway chambers. Mm. Um, think, uh, who knows, hundreds of feet tall. Um, you can yeah. see the ceiling, Marius, because of your dark vision. Um, Seamus mm. and Bragadine would not be able to see the ceiling. It's it's too high. The torchlight can't reach high enough. Um, and a few hundred feet wide. Yeah. Um, Marius is just kind of trying to call out to make sure people are coming and gathering. Everyone's gathering together. Yeah. The other tunnels. <laughs> Bragadine's going to be doing the same, just especially just the. Uh, it's a safe. Uh, my friend Marius, he, he lives in darkness. He, he understands we are fine down there. <laughs> and just. Uh, As you are gathering people, what are you doing, Seamus? Uh, loading my guns. Load, reloading his weapons. Seamus is very methodically <laughs> reloading weapons. Sounds about right. It sounds about right, exactly. As um, as you are all beginning to gather, the people are beginning to gather. The uh, the dwarf um, begins to call out, "Hi, what is the manling? Um, Marius, Marius Wolf." Hi, and, Marius. And kind of step forward, and a pocket <laughs> opens up. Hi, hi Marius. <laughs> Yeah, a pocket <laughs> opens up hand. <laughs> where the uh, where some of the the dwarven warriors, which I mean, and everyone has seen combat. Everyone is bloody and bruised, include your, yourselves included. Um, as it opens up, and the dwarf kind of steps forward. Hi, you've the one to thank for all this. Is he being uh, sarcastic? He looks <laughs> he looks upset. <laughs> uh huh. Um, his cheeks are red. There's blood splashed across him. Um, he looks very upset, actually. As oh. he looks at you, you tell him, you tell that bastard, the debt is paid. 
You mean the Dorum sent you? Of, are you daft, son? Amber Belly. <laughs> of course, of course. I will, I will let him know, Master Dwarf. Thank you so much for. He points for over us. towards the side wall. Mm -hmm. That'll lead you to your man village. And Master Dwarf. Hi. One quick question. Do you know of a an ancient an old room in these mountains? Did not appear to be dwarven make. Mm. Almost like an amphitheater like struck a structure, dome shaped. Um he ponders you know for a moment. Me and McKinn don't know much about most of the knowledge of this side of the underway has been lost. But perhaps, and he calls over another dwarf, Thoric, you know what he's speaking of. And this, this Dawi has um, not as much heavier armor on. He has a large crossbow on his back. A mm -hmm. uh, coraler, as we know them. And mm -hmm. he has a hood over his head. He kind of pulls the hood back. Um, he's a younger dwarf. I think I know the place you speak of. Could you put us in the right direction? Or take us there. Aye, you, uh, you take the tunnel there to that... Uh, uh, the, the, basically the one that they were already pointing to. You take that tunnel and... Once you pass six quints, and this is this is a unit of measurement and Dowie yeah. that you would know, various. Okay. Um, you you hang a left, then a right, and then you go straight, and that should bring you to it. Thank you so much, Master Joseph. I the last well, time I was through you know. there, they had uh, the ratmen had set up traps. Should be careful. Thank you again. We will. As he as Thoric turns, the dwarven thing that was leading this contingent of Dawi looks you steely eyed, Marius. Mm. You'll be sure to tell him, son. The debt is paid. Of course. And he turns, and the dwarves begin to march down the tunnel. Um, the rest of the men, the bandits, are just kind of uh, looking at the three of you at this point. And you have about 20 bandits in your um, current um, vicinity. Is Three Fingers among them? As you are all Boy, looking... <laughs> A Jaeger yeah, is Jaeger. there. Jaeger is also. Yeah. Jaeger actually has like a knife and he's kind of picking at his teeth. He's picked up with a knife at some point. <sighs> well, if we're done playing with our dicks, with the, with the small folk, perhaps we can get the fuck out of this mountain. Um, and as the three of you are glancing around, you do not see three fingers. Oh, shit. Well. We have unfinished business with uh, a dwarf named Coalmouth and a uh, witch hunter. Oh, interesting. We cannot go back home yet. A witch hunter, that is you the say. Way. And he kind mm -hmm. of writes his own hat as you, as mm -hmm. you uh, begin speaking of them. At least he claims to be a witch hunter. Hmm. Heretic, the Master then. Cole. Cole? Ha! <laughs> Cole's been dead for years. I look at my compatriots. I believe he's very much alive. We've all seen him. At least mm -hmm. someone who claims to be him. Yes, yes, this is true. I can, I can definitely vouch for that. Well... We still have unfinished business. You won't be leaving my sight.
Seamus, um, Seamus, go mm-hmm. ahead and give me a perception <coughs> test real quick. Yeah, Seamus has no idea who this guy is. I know. You have no idea who he is. Uh, Neither do, yeah, Bra- Braggity met him, but you didn't. Uh, Braggity's going to lean over it's... to Marius real quick and say, I think he finds you attractive. <laughs> does he find me attractive? He does not. <laughs> he does not find you attractive. Oh, okay. <laughs> uh, <laughs> an 8 out of 56. Damn. Okay. So Seamus, you see out of one of the um, the farther tunnels... You see a slinking form clad in black pass through the farthest tunnel on the right. You see its beady red eyes lock with yours. This is about a hundred feet away, Seamus. And you see a brief silhouette of a rat man, and then he disappears. Oh. Of course he disappears. He's about to get shot. <sighs> well, Marius, we're not alone in this. And I kind of like head nod in that direction. Do I see anything? Um, with your darker vision, uh, Marius, um, as you, as you, you, are pointed in the direction Seamus um, just mentioned. You don't see the uh, the Skaven that he just talked about, but you do, however, see a a hand hanging outside of the tunnel, um, the the exit of this one of these uh, these tunnels. Looks like a human hand. I don't know, I'll kind of like nod towards Seamus and grab my pick and kind of cautiously move over to that that tunnel. Okay. And this is somewhat in the direction of the offshoot tunnel that the uh, the dwarves had pointed you towards. As you begin to move, the, the rest of the bandits uh, begin to move with you. They're very, everyone is very on edge at the moment, looking around. Um, it's extremely dark down here. Few torches were given to you by the uh, by the Dowie, but um, are you guys using any other form of illumination? Like I know Marius has a miner's hat. If you'd like to light that, yeah, I'll probably light that. Okay. Um, the rest yeah, of you, Seamus anything? Can't see so. Seamus would need something because he can't see at all. Okay. Um, um, what what are you going to do, Braggading? How 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 much light does his little his miner's hat doesn't illuminate very much? No, it's like a candlelight. But there are several torches in the crowd. All right. Um, but basically, what I'm asking is, are you going to hold your own torch, or are you going to rely on the men around you? I'm going to hold my own torch. Okay. And, uh, All right. That's fine. And have my shield and torch. Yeah. Yeah, we can. E- you can easily do so. Um, as you begin to appro- cautiously approach the the tunnel. Um, Marius, you would more than likely be in the front. Seamus, right behind you. You would see fresh blood um, pooling towards the outside of this tunnel. And as you get to the edge, you see as you look down into it, bodies. Men. It's like they've been carved to pieces. Bloody ribbons everywhere. There's blood smattering all along this tunnel. And it looks like 12 men lost their lives in this tunnel recently, quietly. <laughs> I knew that um, bastard was following us. Uh, <laughs> d- um, go ahead survivors? and give me an intuition check. Uh, 44 out of uh, 47. Oh, you lucky Ooh. bastard. Yeah. Okay. No. As you look down, you do see amongst the bodies, you see a quivering form. I'll kind of like move the the deceased bodies kind mm-hmm. of off of it or away from it and kind of been down. Yeah. Uh, Seamus and Braggadine, are you moving into the tunnel with him? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, okay. 
Um, as you move in, Mary, she reached down and you pull. There's, it looks like there's two or three bodies laying kind of clumped together. You pull one of them free and you would see a very bloodied and cut and sliced three fingers. Um, barely clinging to life. Um, there is a Skaven dagger plunged into her chest and blood is pumping freely from it. Mm. I'll like uh, I immediately got... pick her up and like move her to the uh, <clears throat> the bigger tunnel mm-hmm. and just be like and yell at the bandits um, form up circle around us <sighs> and um, oh, is that the boss? Hold down and, oh Sigma we praised and James the... I need your help <laughs> and um, yeah Kind of try to do treat her in some way with Seamus. Okay. Um, does one of you want to roll with a plus ten, or do you both want to roll to make attempts? I will I let Marius roll, and mm-hmm. oh. I will use my last thing of healing paste as well. Okay. Okay. I will need so Marius. I need a um, a heal check. You okay. get a plus. You get a plus ten on this. Okay. That's a bad. 15 out of, uh, with a plus 10, 47. 15 out of 40. Okay. So here's what you get with that. You do manage to pull the dagger free um, without it doing any more damage than it already has. You kind of toss it to the side. Um, it is glowing green. This is a warp stone dagger. Um, you can see that there are traces of, looks like, impurities in the wound itself. She still has that, uh, her, her eye is, is missing. She doesn't have her eye patch. Um, she's heavily scarred already, but there's lots of fresh cuts. Um, she is on death's door, but she is still conscious. As Seamus, you use the last of your, um, your healing paste that you've recovered from Golden Tonics and begin to apply it to some of her open wounds. And as you do, you have bought time. But she is going to need surgery. She is going to need something to keep her alive. And she doesn't have much time. But she is conscious for now. Um, would you guys like to do anything? Um, while we're kind of patching up, do we get a good look at her face? You do get a good look at her face. <laughs> that you do. Do we, rec- do we recognize her face? <laughs> um... Um, let's see here. Go ahead and give me an intuition test. All right. 20 out of 47. Okay. 20 out of 47. So, this is who you see. Let me pull up my stuff real quick. (laughs) I know I have it in here. It says why everyone should go away from paper and go to digital, because then they don't have to do this. Right here. (laughs) This is me. Coming through papers. I feel you, bro. Go back to chapter one. Episode, go back to chapter you know, one. Yeah, exactly. Three. Let me <laughs> go back and find this real quick. Here it is. Uh, it, okay, never mind. Here it is. So she is um, somewhat. I mean, she's she's younger than all of you. Um, she appears to be mm-hmm. now that you have a really good look at her, Seamus. She appears to be around her early 20s. Um, She's only about 5'4". Dark brown hair. Um, Her one eye that is remaining is gray. Her features look familiar, Marius. Almost as if you know this woman, but you know you've never met this woman. It's it's very odd. Something about her looks reminiscent. 
but you can't quite place it. Can Bragadine see your face? Of course, Bragadine. Does, does she look familiar to Bragadine at all? Definitely not. Okay. All right. Damn it. Well, uh, and so Seamus, I believe that she's not going to make it unless surgery She's going to need surgery. Happens. Um, she is still okay. conscious right now. She coughs a little bit and like some blood comes up. Um, but she is stable for now. Her men are beginning to move around her and they have essentially made like a, a makeshift stretcher out of oh. like some of their like remaining pieces of weapons and things like that, that they've cobbled together and they're making a stretcher to carry her. But um, she's going to need immediate attention. Sure, we'll, we'll kind of put her over on that, and um, I'll turn to Jameis and Bragadine. Your decision to make and esc- escort this young lady back to Seelberg, bring her to the sisters, and make sure she survives, or we can head to the opposite direction. Uh, go to the dome that uh, transport us to that. Damnable island, Seamus, or that Karak, all those years ago. Do you do you think we might be able to find our way back here? Perhaps we should try to get into the city and, and make sure yeah, she gets I... to to a surgeon. But we can come back here later. Perhaps well, rest we... up ourselves for that. We do know. Uh... DM question. We do know where this amphitheater is. Like, if we're outside, yes. like, we have to go it, up the mountains and stuff. You, and... Yeah, you've taken the path more than once. Um, yeah. You could definitely get to it from outside. Yeah. It's just you don't know the direction from where you're at now is the only problem. Yeah. 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 Well, that guy did point us in that direction. He pointed yeah. you. You you have yet to take the path, though. <laughs> so yeah, yeah, it's all exactly. theoretical at the moment. <laughs> uh, um, it's, it's not. I'm just worried about time. So much time has passed. Taking care of these these rats, we're telling what they're doing in that room. We're taking it back to the city, Marius. These men aren't going to make it if we leave them. He is right, and perhaps we we don't want to rush into anything with with the, with too strong a head. We will we will just end up dying. She uh, we can, we can. Th- three fingers begins to. <laughs> I can't go back. You will go back. It's the only way you live. You don't understand. He'll, he'll kill us all. <coughs> Who will? Gold. Gold. He, he did this. He sold us out. To whom? The Skaven? Or the rats, sorry. Yes, the... The Underfolk. Yes, I... I believe we, we came to that assumption ourselves. We just didn't have concrete proof. <laughs> Let's go, Marius. We have a halfling to kill. Hmm. Hmm. Well, this is all quite fascinating, but um, can we please get the fuck out of here? You're right, yeah. cool. And uh, all right, lads, and uh, let's let's head this way. And I'll point towards the the way that the dwarf pointed to the city. I guess. Okay. All right. And, and we'll, sorry, you, hey, is you that begin. the way through the bloody calf path of dead bodies? It is not. Okay. It is not. It's uh, it's a a different tunnel uh, close by, but not uh, not through the uh, through the dead men. Um, you begin moving in that direction. Um, I'm gonna need perception. Picks test. up the dagger. Oh, you do. Okay. You reach down <laughs> and pick up the dagger. Um, Seamus, there's heat, like l- literal heat, coming off of it as you grab a hold of the blade. And as you pick mm-hmm. it up, um, you see that there is a mirror like sheen. To the uh, to the green glowing stone. Um, are you trying to do this stealthily, Seamus? 
No, my I, I'm gonna pick it up and like turn to the uh, the witch hunter. Yeah, he sees you pick it up. Huh. I wouldn't play with that if I were you. Dangerous stuff. Weird stone. Oh, uh, it's funny. I've gone eight or ten years without coming across one of you, and in the past week, there's two of you now. Two. Well, I don't know about this coal, but I've been here for months. Then I'll, I'll kind of like hand him the dagger if he wants it. You hand it to him? Mm hmm He takes it. Um, and he produces um, a... It's a very grisly totem as it appears to be a piece of rat flesh. Still slick with gristle and fat. And he wraps the blade in the skin and makes like some tethers to tie it off. This should shield it. You sure you don't want it? Be a hell of a trophy. Mm, I've got plenty of that stuck in me. <laughs> I think I might like you. What was your name? Mm, you can call me the headsman. Oh. You can call me Jaeger. Jaeger? Yes. Headsman. It's been a while since I've heard that name. Oh, indeed it has. In fact, I've been looking for you. It's nice to put a face to the name. I'll Thank add you, you to the list of the other people looking for me. <laughs> well, hopefully I'm still at the top. I'd like to have a bit of a chat with you and Mr. Wolf over there when we get a chance. Perhaps out of this godforsaken mountain. I'm looking forward to this chat. As am I. James turns and walks away. Turns and walks away. Yeah, turn and walk away. Damn right you do. And as it happens, <laughs> um, uh, I need perception tests from the three of you. Um, I got a 48 out okay. of 56. And how about uh, bracketing? You got a 30 out of 52. Uh, how are we treating my ear? Uh, your ear is a permanent minus 30 to your perception. Oh, yeah. All right. Well, that kind of cancels out my uh, yep. acute hearing there. Your acute right. hearing. You're, you now have normal hearing since you've lost an ear. Okay. All right. Your ear belongs to Crutch now. <laughs> you did never recover your ear. I'm just throwing it out there. Um, okay. Who knows? All right. Um, I'll throw that out of my notes. Uh, it is uh, 30 under 64. Okay, that's so still really good. Um, and Marius? Uh, 25 out of 57. <clears throat> okay, all right. So between the three of you, um, you are easily able to keep an eye out for any um, possibly hidden uh, agendas. There's a couple times that like some, some shadows pass, and it turns out it's actually just regular rats, um, things like that, as all of you are on edge as you begin taking this tunnel and it takes quite some time to move through this tunnel but you do eventually make surface after about an hour or two the men are tired extremely tired carrying three fingers they've been taking turns and shifts carrying her up jaeger has been quiet and contemplative um Mostly hanging out um, around both you, Seamus, and Marius. He is not letting the two of you out of his sight. Um, he's made that very apparent that he is going to uh, follow you till he gets what he wants. Um, but you do make surface. And you realize that you are in the mountains. Right outside of Sealburg. Daytime or nighttime? It is nighttime. Um, hey, Jaeger. 
We might need your help uh, clearing some things up in the city. He, you guys, and as you look down, you can see that there's smoke billowing from parts mm -hmm. of the city. Mm -hmm. um, specifically from the, uh, from the front gate. Mm. It looks like maybe the rats got out of here as well. Let's, let's go. I think if Otto is still there, I can convince him not to throw us in prison. Huh. <laughs> What'd you do? Kill somebody else I know? Well, we were set up by this other witch hunter, I believe. We went to uh, an old ranger station and they had gone mad with some sorcery or something. And it ended up burning down. A, there were no survivors. We were blamed for the incident and were to be executed tomorrow morning. Or is this in the past? Sorry. Uh, this past morning, I guess. Yes. I'm trying to think of the timeline. Yes. Yeah, Something like that. It was to be executed, executed mm, this timeline. morning. Yeah. <laughs> well. We managed to escape. It seems like you're both wanted men for good reason. You slaughtered an entire barracks from what you just admitted. And by all rights, a witch hunter condemned you to no, death. No, no, sir. It, it, it was not exactly like that. It was, it was, it, it was, it was a trap laid for us. We they were mad. They they killed each other. <laughs> Threw, threw flaming bottles upon each other. I'm sure they did. Um, I'll and see at if this you point, understand. he's glancing around, and um, the bandits are moving with with three fingers um, towards. Yeah, yeah. If, if we're I was walking, we're all talking. Okay, we're all still walking. walking. Okay, good. Yeah, yeah. He's glancing around at his company. Um, you see him looking around. Well, now is not the time to discuss. Semantics. I'll tell you what. Me and you have our little chat. Maybe I could see what I can do. Of course. But. I'm sure she Seamus and I were the last two. We, we know. He did mention his brother, right? Like yes. Certain, oh, yes. Yeah. We were the last two. See your brother. He'd be happy to tell you what happened. Good. I will say, don't lie. But I will do what I can for you in town. If it turns out that these things are false. Mitch just puts his pick on his shoulder and is, and is walking. Okay. And walking you guys down. Are walking down. Um, it takes quite some time to to get down. You're looking at another hour or two. Three fingers is not. She's looking real bad. In fact, at this point, um, you make it down to the actual gate of uh, Seelberg, the the large wall, and right outside the gate, as the the, the procession is moving. Um, most of the bandits that are with you begin to, they, they pause um, before you get out of cover of the tree line. There's thick smoke um, coming um, from further ahead. They pause and they look back. We, they look to you specifically, um, Seamus. We can't, you know, we can't go in there, sir. Can, can you, could you bring her? We All right, now I guess I'll, uh, you know, <laughs> taking her through the entryway of the door style, you know. Oh, yeah? Way. Okay, yeah. You kind of scoop <laughs> oh, her up yeah, uh, out yeah. of the, 
I mean, she sounds too too fucked up to throw over my shoulder. Yo, no, yeah, she's pretty bad. Uh, you kinda, and a gentleman. You kind of pick her up, um, holding her. She kind of drapes herself over your arm. She's she's almost completely mm. limp. There's almost no um, no strength left in her. Um, most of her blood begins to kind of soak into what's left of your tattered shirt, um, as a, uh, over your uh, your armor as you begin to walking forward. Um. Marius and Bragadine. I'm assuming you guys are, are coming as well. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And Jaeger walks with you. He makes a mental note of you see. Well, you know what? Um, Bragadine, go ahead and give me a intuition test. Ooh. It's, uh, it's not good. Really not good. Um, you know what? Let's just reroll it. Let's burn a first porch point. Okay. I want to know what you need to know. Ah. 39 out of... 7, 67. 39 out of 67. So was that four levels of success? Okay. Three levels of success. Yeah. You're, you're kind of further in the back. Um, but you see uh, Jaeger, the witch hunter, as... All of you begin to step out outside of the edge of the forest here into the, the street which leads into the main gate. You see him look back and he you see him sizing up the bandits as they're moving away. Um, almost as if he marks each man mentally. And he does the same, same so as he glances over at you. And almost with a keen eye, you get the idea that he is assessing you for your combat capabilities. And you see him scan the rest of the party, gauging who or what he might be capable of overtaking. And you do see his hand move towards the dagger that Seamus gifted him. But it pauses at the hilt and he begins to walk behind the party. What are you going to do, Bragadine? Mr. Jaeger, what are you doing back there? Please, please, come come up and talk with us. Uh, I, uh, I must be honest, I, uh, that fear gives me gas and I am... You do not want to stand behind me right now. Please, come walk alongside us. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> My God. He sullies his nose. Mm. Think I'll be fine back here. Oh. Oh, I had a brioche earlier. You, 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 you wish you hadn't. I'm telling you. Um, and, yeah, it's at this point, I'm um, bracketing, that as, as all of you are beginning to walk forward, you see that the billowing smoke is coming off the remnants of the wagons and tents of the previous occupants that used to live outside the city of Sealburg. As the Stragani, it looks like, have all been burned alive and killed. And there are piles of corpses of men, women, and children stacked up along the sides of the road here, smoldering. Has Marius and Seamus learned Seamus. any Bretonian yet? Have they what? I mean, I seem to remember a little bit uh, Bretonian. Um, I believe some. I believe yeah. Marius knows a little bit. Seamus does not know any. All right. Bragging is going to walk by Marius and make it look like he's, he's not talking. Like talk, basically, talk kind of just directly say it to Marius, but try to only to Marius in Bretonian. Jaeger's planning to kill us, the trap. And just hoping that he, I don't know what his proficiency with, with Bretonian would be. It's like choppy, I think. Okay. It's like, mm -hmm. it's like yeah. Perhaps you hear Jaeger and it's I, I don't know. <laughs> Jaeger and kill. I mean, yeah. Jaeger is kind of, kind of hard to... Uh, it'd be a hard one to disguise. Yeah. Um, Jaeger, you know. Jaeger. 
to <laughs> throw, throw, throw a French well, I mean, that's, that's fine. I mean, yeah, but I just, I'm just not going to say, like, hey, he's back there trying to stab us in the back. Obvious, but try to be spy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, okay. I, I don't, I'll leave a video, but I don't know if I understand or not. So, um, Go ahead and give me an intelligence test. Straight intelligence. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> I fail. It's a fifty nine on thirty six and I don't He's have speaking any to you you do you pick up the word Jaeger and you pick up okay. you do pick up the word um gas. Yeah, you pick up the word gas. <laughs> there we go. I didn't Yeah, you kinda of ponder <laughs> as you are as you're moving forward. Um I'm assuming oh, that Seamus is just, just walking straight through the yep. through the gate. Seamus has been in this uh, area of the city before. Yes, he yes, he happens. has. The yeah. Temple of the Holy Sisters, the um, uh, Sisters of Shalia, is Maris not is, too not too far. Um, Mary's mm-hmm. looks angry, by the way, as he's like, I'm more focused. As Brighton's like saying this, but mm-hmm. I do hear him speaking Bretonian and kind of understand some words. But Mary's is just looking at the the burnt bodies and his. His face is flushed uh, with mm-hmm. with anger, and uh, you can like almost feel like a white hot heat coming off of him. He's just he's angry. He's, yes, his hands are white knuckled around his his pick, uh, and he is not a happy man. And it is a it is a grisly sight, um, to say the least. Probably some of the worst that, well, that you've seen since Bretonia. Let's put it like that. Um, yeah. But the three of you begin to press forward um, with Jaeger in tow. Uh, you, there is no resistance, Seamus, as you pass through the gates. Um, there are guards atop the gate, but it they, looks like there, stuff is in disarray up here. Not exactly sure what, what happened or what is happening, but no one's stopping you as you move towards the temple itself. Um, you make it not. to the uh, to the entryway, and you see that the temple doors are wide open, and you do hear screams and calling from inside uh, the temple itself, oh, and there are sisters running to and fro. Hmm. I mean, I'm going in. Yeah, you just immediately just start stepping inward, and you see that there are this place is full. People are bleeding and hurt um, tons of citizens of Sealberg. So many so that they're beginning to line up people in the alley behind the temple itself, trying to keep the street clear from what you can gather. Um, There are hundreds of people that look like they need care. And it's at this point that um, Marius and Bragadine, as you are outside, as as, uh, Seamus goes in, you would notice that many of the buildings around here have serious structural damage. Um, Almost as if, I don't know, an earthquake or something happened uh, not too long ago. And there may or may not be some aftermath to do with that. Oh, nice. Uh, How how close is my house, actually? Your house is is, is towards the center of town. Nice is probably... Green, I'm, I must go. And um, Marius is probably going to start blowing blow and sprinting to the faggy. Going uh, to the faggy? Oh, no. To check okay. on uh, um, his family. Okay. All right. Um, so you're you're leaving Seamus, though? Yeah, he'd probably leave Seamus and, okay. and Bragging. All right. Seamus, where's the faggy? Oh, okay. Okay, Marius. And I will go in into the temple while I'm trying to find Seamus. Okay. And some help myself. And the two of you look like hammered shit as well, I might add. Um, mm-hmm. One of the sisters does come up to... They, they see um, you, specifically Bragadine. Um, of course they do. Look at you um, with some disdain in their eye. But then they look over at Seamus and see the woman he's carrying. And... One and one of them, uh, Sister Mary specifically, comes up. You would remember her from previously. Bragadine comes up and immediately grabs a hold of three fingers 
and um, begins to escort you to a, a, a side room. If you allow. Mm-hmm. Yes. Okay. As she does so, they bring her there, they set her down, and she begins calling for help and begins uh, praying over her and tells you um, that you can you can wait outside. Um, do I still technically have my money? Yeah, yeah, you can, you you would you okay. would have your money. Okay, I mean, I have a lot of money. That's that's, that's what I wanted to check. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. Okay. Uh, All of your equipment was was recovered, besides those weapons and things like that. But, um, in that case, I will place my six gold, like on this table or somewhere in this room. Mm-hmm. And then, if they wanted me to leave, I'll leave. Okay, you stack six gold pieces. Um. Mary flushes and like almost blanches at the sheer amount of, of just, of, of wealth that you are displaying right now. Um, as you place it on one of the nearby, uh, kind of like makeshift tables and continues going back to her work, trying to treat three fingers. It's going to take some time for treatment. Mm-hmm. And let me make some rolls real quick. I assume I see Braggadine at some point and you tell do. me about the baggie. You do, indeed. Yeah. Okay. Depending on how long this takes, yeah, I'll probably make my way to the thaggy. It's once, going to take some time. Um, and at some point, the, uh, the matriarch herself... Uh, uh, Matriarch Alexis is called in and also has to provide aid. But ultimately, Three Fingers is stabilized. Um, it takes quite some time, though. Um, you're looking at least an hour, maybe two. So are you yeah, going I, to wait I, I, the whole I, time or are you going to move? No, I, I, would, I wouldn't stay for it. Okay. All right. So Bragadine um, um, and Seamus. Bragadine needs a little aid, so I'm, I may actually... Dragon will be, um, will be uncharacteristically docile, mm-hmm. but is probably going to hang out at the temple to see get basically get triage and get okay. fine because I'm I'm hurt pretty bad. Yeah, I will say with with you if you guys hunt out for maybe an hour, I would give you guys mm-hmm. um, the equivalent of a short rest. Oh, if you are uh, interested, very interested. Mm-hmm. Not famous wouldn't. I need it, but I I'm not going to. Okay. Um, all right. In that case, you, you do not receive any medical treatment. They're, they're very, very busy. Mm-hmm. And I mean, Seamus has other things he needs to do. So he's other things. I mean, it's true. It's true. Time, time well, is a commodity you, right now. Mm-hmm. So yeah, as soon as I dropped her off, uh, if Braggadine stays, Seamus would leave. Okay. okay. Um, are you staying Braggadine? Yeah, for a little bit. Okay, all right. You will wait the hour then. In that case, we move to um, Marius as you are moving as fast as you can through the uh, main streets. Who, yes. Who did, did Jaeger follow anyone? In, in Jaeger is what I'm about to get to. Jaeger is actually okay. behind Marius. Okay. Keeping you within his sight, Marius. And as you're moving forward, he is keeping pace with you. Um, from about a 10 foot distance moving, uh, moving as quickly as he can. Now, are you attempting to duck at any alleys or anything like that? Or are you just running down the main street, Marius? I'm, I'm running as fast as I can. You still okay. most direct route. Yeah. All right. In that yeah. case, yeah, you, and at some point you begin to pass by guards and they see your face and some of them point at you. But you're moving so quickly, they don't have time to react. You get the idea that there's there's just so much chaos right now that you're not a priority at the moment. Um, you do manage to make it to the Thaggy um, in relatively good time. Jaeger is behind you as you make it to the entrance of the Thaggy. And most of the buildings on this row of town... Um, this is the, the the more the nicer quarter of town uh, towards the uh, towards the town center. Most of the buildings are in okay shape. 
Um, there's one or two that are crumbled, but it looks like the thaggy is in perfect condition. Maybe Press due to the fact that it's dwarven built. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> and um, as you you make it to the door, what do you do? Yeah, if he's burst to the door, probably. And, um, looking for Sarah, Thordum, and Priscilla. Um, yeah, as soon as the door opens, you see that... Uh, the the main um the main room has the most of the tables have been kind of cleared out and there are people that are laying out on makeshift cots it looks like uh somebody has turned this into a makeshift infirmary probably due to the fact that medical attention is in dire need around this entire city right now and thor doom is behind the bar um, he has his blunderbuss pointed at the, the door as you, uh, punch your way through and he, he sees you and his eyes light up. Hi, ah, Marius, you made it. Oh, Thornton. And I kind of like duck out of the way just to make sure he doesn't blow my head off, you know? And he just kind of swings the, he swings the, the, uh, the gun wide. Ha ha ha. That's my boy. Come and come quick, quick. <laughs> Sarah and Priscilla. And safe. you you see little Priscilla is with Sarah and they are currently um treating somebody kind of she's helping her helping her mother wrap someone's head. Um and it looks like they're both they both have blood plastered uh, on their clothing and it doesn't appear that they are wounded but it looks like they have been the ones treating the individuals yeah. inside of this tap room. Marius and would as, probably run up and, and you know, uh, hug both of them, you know, hold both of them. You, you move up uh, and um, Priscilla looks, she looks at you and for the first time, Marius, you see that she has little tears welling up in her eyes as she sees you and her arms open up. And for the first time, she embraces you around the waist. <gasps> Sarah does the same. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and... Um, feels right. Feels good, yeah. Feels good. Feels good. You have a little family moment there for a few yeah. minutes. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Got and to get emotional right now. Session yeah. ended. At this, <laughs> session, this ended. <laughs> session ended. <laughs> the whole time, um, Jaeger is at the at the door just kind of looking around um almost uh, almost callous callously looking around at uh wh what has happened in here still gonna need that talk wolf and you know still holding his family of course of course i am yeah. safe and, and i kind of who's this know. one he looks like one of them Zealots. The witch hunter. And Jaeger. Hmm. And Thordum begins stroking his rather long, prestigious beard um, over his gut. And the blunderbuss is, while not pointed in his direction, it is firmly in his hand still as he looks yeah, over yeah. Um, towards Jaeger. Nigger just kind of look, just kind of glances up at him and kind of shrugs his shoulders. Come on now, Wolf. Your family's alive. That's fine, McCready. I want to have this talk. You know, Marius is fine, fine. Marius will kind of explain to his family, you know, briefly because I know they're busy. You know, mm -hmm. of course. But uh, um, and. Uh, just let them know that they need to stay here and you know not leave Thay. And um, and Thordum does in I manling. They won't leave They're under my protection now. As they always have Thordum. been. Of course. Of course. Thank you so much, Thordum. Oh, yes. And uh now let's go talk. To Jaeger. Check on Seamus and Braggadine back at the Sisters of Charlia. And as you leave, Marius, um, mm -hmm. you begin moving back in the direction 
of where you last left uh, Seamus and Bragadine. And Seamus comes walking up, and you, you, the two of you actually meet in the town square <laughs> in the center, um, uh-huh. where normally they're around. Uh, the, there would be tables and and stalls set up where there would be food to be had, even in, even at this time of night. Um, which I will say, it is. It's slightly after sundown. It's not like midnight or anything like that, but. It, all of you are beginning to become very, very tired, and there might be some checks need to be made soon. But regardless, you, as you meet um, with Jaeger behind you, you hear a a deep, throaty laugh coming down the street, and you would recognize the pitch and the timber as it carries on the wind of one Mr. Gold. Um, Is he with anyone? Do we see him? You glance over in the direction that you thought you heard it, and it this goes down the main the main street, um, which leads to the mine itself. There are buildings on the side here, and you notice that you see several ogres standing in front of the entrance of the governor's mansion, Mister Freeze's um, quarters. Mm. There's several ogres. Several ogres, and you would recognize them as being um, some of those within his uh, his company. Last time you saw him, I recognize is Oro among them. Oro is among them. Still alive. Mm. Uh, <laughs> are they? I don't, we don't see Mister Gold. You don't yet, see right? Mister Gold, but you do see his lackeys. And he laughed. Oh, like, he's, he's laughing. Yeah, you heard you heard his laugh. It it that that shrill kind of deep tone that it has. Yeah. Um, you heard it carried on the wind. Um, you know, Mary's looking kind of look at the Seamus. Let's go have a chat with the the runt. Head nod. And. Uh, <sighs> You're, you're welcome to follow, Jaeger. Mm, this might be interesting. Who exactly is this? He's our local boil here. <laughs> Scab. Mm. Well. Else? Halfling. Halfling, you say? Mm. Well. Perhaps he'll smell as good as the food he makes. On a pyre. Mary, Mary slightly smiles. A slight smirk. Just a little bit of a smirk? Of bur- <laughs> <Yes>. Burning <laughs> burning gold alive. Of course. But he, he quickly does not, you know, hide yeah, Of course. It. Of course not. Um, um, <laughs> as the uh, three of you begin moving in that direction, um... You make it to the close proximity of the ogres, and and they all begin to turn. Oro specifically turns and points a a stubby finger at you, Marius, and his eyes kind of go a little wide. Huh? You're supposed to be dead. Where is he, Oro? Where, where's who? Your master. Oh, and you can see him kind of, kind of stroking his like itching the side of his head um, as he's looking down at you. The other three are kind of also kind of watching this exchange happen. Um, Jaeger uh, looks up at Oro. God, I hate these things. Mm. 
what are you guys doing? Or I was just scratching his head, dumbfounded. Yeah, he's just dumbfounded, standing in front of the door. <laughs> Gold, you fool! I oh. just kind of yell at him. Oh. Mm. Yes, um, he's indisposed. And at that moment, Marius you, you look Marius up, Marius, is, uh, and there's a, uh, on the second floor of the, uh -huh. of the, the governor's mansion here, there are shuttered windows out to the street, and they are open. And you hear from inside <laughs> of laughing. Gold or, is, gold or Krieger? It is definitely gold. <laughs> I swear to God, bro. You, you put you harm a hair on Krieger's head. <laughs> it is, it uh, is Mr. Gold. You hear his laugh from coming, from coming okay. upstairs. <laughs> All right. Um, um, Maris is going to try and intimidate Oro and, and the the uh, the ogres. Okay, go and give me an intimidation check. Uh, that's all right. Forty eight out of uh, eighty. Okay. Um. All right, Maris. You kind of how do you do it? Do you just kind of you put a little flex on him? I mean, um... uh, Maris just kind of grips his pick and just says, "Leave." Now, uh, and Oro kind of, um, huh, and then he kind of shrugs his shoulders and then steps to the side, um, looking down at you as you move to the door, which is which is open. Um, do you press inside? Yeah, press inside. Okay, I'm assuming um, Seamus is doing the same. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. As you press inside, um. Oro ducks down and then begins to squeeze himself through the door behind you. You hear him, and you hear kind of the frame begin to like catch on one of his love handles as he kind of shoves himself through the door. Um, it is not a pretty uh, sight, to say the least, but he does manage to pry himself through. And some of the three other ogres begin to attempt to do the same. Um... As this happens, um, I'm assuming you guys are covering the stairs to go mm -hmm. up to where you heard Mr. Gold. Jaeger yeah. is behind you, and he is just in like his like jaw dropped watching these ogres try to fumble their way through this doorway. It is almost like watching a uh, dramatic reenactment of the Three Stooges. Um, as they're fumbling over onto each other, their 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 massive bulk and sweat getting stuck in the uh, in the creases of the wood, um, and it's it's a horrendous sight. Um, as but the two of you have eyes only for Mister Gold, and as you get to the door to the office, there's a man standing in front of the office that you would recognize for sure, Seamus as the rose he is somewhat short about five six five seven um he has uh, darker colored eyes and hair he has what looks like a little half cape covering his kind of right shoulder um you would notice a rapier on his hip and a a large uh pistol on his other um he sees the two of you approach and squares up. Uh, what is uh, what is this, Seamus? You better get out of the way. Hey, <laughs> what are you going to do? I'll make you get out of the way. <laughs> Judging by the state you're in, I don't think you have uh, much of a how do we say this uh, leg to stand on. Oh, you're not about to have any legs. <sighs> Come on, Seamus. Will pull. Seamus pulls two pistols out. You pull both pistols out? Okay. You pull the pistols out, Seamus. Pull them out. Point them at him. And... He's only about ten feet from you, Seamus. But you see him tense.
are you going to shoot this man or are you trying to intimidate this man? Uh, we're going to intimidate him first. Okay, go ahead and give me an intimidation check. <laughs> Ooh, 46 out of 58. Okay. okay. I'll give you some bonuses on that. Okay, yeah, I rolled like shit. Mm. As the rose um, puts both of his hands up. Come now, Shemus. We are the, we are friends. It is, uh, it's fine. And he begins to back away from the door that leads to Governor Free's office. Mary will walk up to him. Mm-hmm. And um, I'm going to grab his gun. At least try to. Okay. No, you can. You he is. Seamus has two pistols drawn on him. Yeah. He has his hands up. You grab a hold of his gun. I I take his gun and I, you know, uh, I put it in Seamus's belt. Okay. Uh, and, All right. Uh, I don't think you'll be needing this. Hey, it's it's I, fine. It's fine. You should leave. I. He's not worth it. <laughs> I'm beginning to see that uh, my employment might be needed elsewhere. Yes. <laughs> and do the two of you get into the office at this point? Yeah, I mean, I'm assuming if, if he's got guns on him, I'm going to like open up the office. Okay. You, um, how, how, are you just like slamming this door open? Yeah, I'm, I'm bursting open, you know, like... I don't know if I want to kick the door open just because. No, don't kick but, it. Yeah, <laughs> Mary's is, is gonna be, just kind of like open it up rather quickly. You open the door up, and as you do, um, boom! The door flies open, and you see that Governor Freeze is sitting behind his desk. Um. Looks like he is listening, or it looks like he's having a glass of wine with Mr. Gold. Mr. Gold is sitting on the opposite side, who immediately startles <laughs> and looks oh, and looks behind him at uh, the two of you. Oh, oh, hey, you, oh, you, you're alive! This is this is great! This is great! I was just telling the governor that I that I was going to be doing so much for the community here. In Zilberg, and you too uh, are going to be a great part of this. When when Seamus walks in, he's going to lock the door. You close the, the door the behind box. you. Mm -hmm. Um, there is a latch. You latch the door. And then, uh, I latch the door, and then if there's like a chair to wedge up against it, if not, I'll knock gold out of his chair. Uh, there is a chair nearby that you would get to wedge under the door. And at this point, um, the governor stands up. What? What is, the, what is the meaning of this? What is going on? He has sold us out, governor. What? He is the reason. A city burns. What, what do you mean? The rats. He had deals with them. What do you rats? And then you can see that uh, Mr. Gold is like sweating, beads of sweat piling down the side of his his grubby little face. All of the rings on his fingers clattering together. I, I, I you don't know what what is the, what does he speak of? What is oh, rats? This is come now, come now, come now, Marius. What is, what has got me to you? We have proof. A witness. Who is this witness you speak of? Unimportant. But she says that you sold us out. <gasps> a I, woman. I, I, you I, hear this, Governor? I mean, I, he, he brings he brings a woman for testimony. Question. Uh, th I've done investigations too. Did I discover anything? You know. I know I've told the governor of all of his illicit affairs. You, now, you, you've obviously. told him uh, all that, all that you that you could uh, that that you've mm -hmm. managed to get a hold of because you made a point to. Um, yeah. Sadly, the there partners. is there's not nothing there's nothing concrete enough to to yeah. stick. Yeah, Marish will just say, um, "We know you ran afoul of your partners. You had to have us." 
Clean up your mistake. I uh, is Jaeger is Jaeger in the room with us. Jaeger it would yes, Jaeger would be in the room okay. with you. Okay. This man was held captive by these these rats. For how long, are Jaeger? Hmm. Well, let's not get too hasty. But yes, the underfolk do exist. And he glances around everyone in this room, but that is a discussion for another time. You said this thing here had deals with them? Yes. Um, question, would Marius yes. be able to put together some things, you know, like the symbology of the, the tattoos on the gang members and stuff like that? There's, I mean, there's been a lot of strange things that have happened around Sealberg. Yeah. Well, like specifically like the tattoo with the knife in it. And, I mean, you, you, you tell know. me what, what, what Marius is putting together here. I mean, Marius, yeah. Marius is going to be, <laughs> he's, uh, <laughs> these, your men all have bear the symbol of these, these creatures. I, I know not what you speak of. This is all Tattoos. slander. Slander, I tell you. Governor, you've surely seen them about the town. They're everywhere. I... Proudly walking around with these brands on their arms. A symbol of their pact with the rats. I... He's... And at this point, I've, I've kind of gone up and grabbed Mr. Gold and like, oh, no. picked him up <laughs> by his uh, <laughs> um, and down, down, him up with one arm. Don't, don't yeah. do anything you might regret. I can I can make you rich. I can... I, there's so much we can do together, Marius. You are a blight on this town. Governor. Decide now. Do you want to side with this thing? Who corrupts us at our very core? Or be done with it? The governor looks at you, Marius. There, uh, you know, Marius is going There's other options besides this thing. Yes, yes, there is. Um, perhaps we can discuss this. This seems uh, rather hasty. Mr. Wolf, uh, there is proceedings that must take place. There must be evidence introduced. I am no... Well, I am not above the law. But I am. And Jaeger draws his pistol. That was my line. Where? <laughs> So sorry, bro. That was a good line. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Points it at Mr. Gold. You're gonna burn, little man. What are you guys doing? James is kicked back back to the wall right now. <laughs> uh, but uh, I am I am like eyes locked on freeze because, you know, they're drinking wine when we walked in this room. Seamus is upset by that. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. What are you um, going to do, Marius? Covering your people out there. They suffer because of this thing. This man is, has caused undue harm to our city. I have no jurisdiction here, Marius. You are the governor. I must uphold the law. I must have evidence, but... As this you man says, and he points towards Jaeger... I have come to you with... with evidence before. You know it. We you must have a blind a, eye to it. We, we will have to have a trial, Marius. Unless you wish to go with our fine witch hunter friends alternative. He will He will worm his way out if we hold the trial. He will pay someone off. He will escape. Well, 
I'm eager to have our chat, so let's just be done with this now. And you see yeah. his finger twitching on the trigger, Seamus. Mm -hmm. Looks like he's about to blow Mr. Gold's brains out unless something is done mm -hmm. here. Seamus is going to do it. Marius, uh, final decision. Uh, <laughs> Marius is holding gold, right? He's holding. Yeah, it. I'm holding up. I'm holding up in the air, kind of like with one arm. And he's he's squirming and trying to wiggle his way out of his grasp, but it's impossible. Um, he's he's a good shot. Just, <laughs> <laughs> um. This is a tough decision, I'm not gonna lie. Uh Set him down, Maris. Set him down. Oh Yes, listen, listen to listen to, listen to Seamus. It's, it's, it's madness. Just, just drop him on the you know, just release <sighs> my grasp, let him fall. Yeah. Seamus just... walks over, pulls the pistol out. Quietly says nothing, pulls the trigger. <laughs> oh, <geez. laughs> yes. Okay. Boom. How how do you do this, Seamus? I mean, as soon as he like sets him down, I don't know if he like squirms anywhere, but I just walk over, you know, silent like death. Yes. And just pull, pull pull the gun out. He's like probably like backed up into a corner. Mm -hmm. Just let him stare down the barrel and. Just... And as this happens, um, freeze is behind you as the boom of the pistol rings out. And that, my friends, is where we're gonna take our first break. <laughs>